from San Giovanni Bosco Hospital. Um, and this follows on from Farrell's talk last week, uh, where we looked at, you know, just CETO interventions from basic to advance. Uh, and knowing Roberto, I'm sure this is going to be an interactive session as well, where you'll be asking us some questions along the way, Roberto. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Azim. Thank you, uh, Joachim and uh, colleague. Uh, we will start with uh, this uh, session on complication during CTO PCI. We can have some uh, different uh, situation in which we, uh, we unfortunately can have uh, this kind of complication. Uh, we know that uh, CTO PCI are the most complex of uh, uh, coronary procedure and uh, uh, they are related with the higher complication on respect to uh, non-CTO PCI. You can see in this slide in terms of MACE, uh, uh, MI, and uh, mainly perforation and uh, uh, tamponade. Uh, we know that uh, the experience, the expertise uh, in the last uh, 15 years changed a lot in, the, in this uh, kind of procedure. We, uh, you can see in the blue line, we can reach uh, now success rate in the last, uh, uh, this slide is a, a, an old one, uh, up to 2011. Now we know that uh, we, we succeed more than 90% of uh, success rate. And uh, if you are able to do uh, every kind of technique, also the complication rate decreases. So experience increase the success and reduce the complication. We know that uh, rate of grade approach is uh, related with the uh, more, uh, higher risk of complication. You can see here and uh, the yellow is the rate of grade and uh, the red is anti-grade and uh, uh, mainly due to perforation. So you can see that we can have uh, up to 7%. This is a uh, progress uh, data from progress CTO registry. And uh, uh, so we, but uh, we can have complication also in an anti-grade approach. And I try to, uh, to have some, uh, um, try to divide the, um, this kind of a complication uh, uh, we can start with the main vessel perforation in uh, in uh, anti-grade. This is a case uh, uh, that that was a uh, quite straightforward uh, circumflex occlusion. Uh, you can see here that was uh, open quite fast, but then because of classification. Uh, in the proximal to the CTO, we have uh, uh, this uh, huge perforation on the circ. The circ proximal circ is very complex to treat because uh, you cannot treat by surgery uh, because you need to, to, to close the left main and you need to, to, to close by, um, by cover stent. The, this is the treatment of uh, uh, perforation, the algorithm. If you have a large vessel perforation, it depends on guiding catheter, uh, the size of your guiding catheter, uh, because if you are, if you are a seven or eight French, normally I work with uh, seven or eight French during CTO, and uh, I don't use six French. Six French you can use in normal PCI, if, but uh, you have two strategy, uh, the single guiding catheter technique or a dual uh, ping pong technique in order to put uh, a cover stent. And this situation, the first situation, the first approach is to close, to close with the balloon, uh, the, the hole. And uh, uh, in this case, I need to do, the, if you can see on the left, uh, a ping pong technique uh, plus a guide liner in order to, to put the graph massa cover stent and uh, close the perforation. This is another case of integrated CTO PCI it was, uh, uh, was sent me by my colleague. It was is an expert colleague in CTO, and you can see this occlusion is at the level of is the mid mid distal occlusion of the LAD, and uh, he crossed the CTO with the uh, with IVUS guidance. You can see in the diagonal the IVUS uh, with the Conquest Pro Nine, and he dilated. You can see on the right with the. Uh, 1.25 millimeter balloon. So at this point, everything uh, uh, should be normal, but you can see the result. 
The conquest provide was uh, uh, completely outside of the vessel and uh, the operator made two mistakes. Did, didn't, do, uh, didn't do the contralateral injection and did not check into orthogonal projection. So uh, this was the result of a, a mistake also even if it was a very expert operator. In fact, he uh, was great in treating this complication, uh, putting a balloon in uh, proximal to the occlusion in order to obtain uh, a immediate hemostasis. Uh, you can see the, on the right the echo. Uh, we have only mild pericardial effusion. The blood pressure is stable. So wait and see without uh, very important uh, uh, the use of protamine. So when you have uh, gear in your coronary artery, you have not put protamine. At this stage, uh, he used the jail microcatheter technique, uh, try to in order to recanalize the artery. So uh, he advanced a new Sion blue beyond the occlusion balloon. He take a fine cross uh, and uh, uh, he tried to uh, understand the perforation sites. And with the balloon occluded, in order to avoid uh, increase of perforation, he performed the, the CTO with the ultimate bros three, you can see on the left, and Miracle 12. And then he obtained recanalization of the LAD, closing the perforation with the, with the cover stand. So, this was a great management of uh, uh, a bad complication due uh, to, to mistakes of this, uh, um, of the, in this case. So if we can go to, to discuss something or uh, I can go on with the, with the second session of preparation. Um, maybe just a quick, two quick questions and see if there's anything from the chat or whether Joachim has a question. So, in the second case, um, you know, this is obviously a very expert operator, right? Who then occluded the vessel and could still recanalize it with a microcatheter behind the occluded balloon. Now, yeah. if this had happened to someone more junior, what advice would you give them to do that? Yeah, in this situation, uh, is this is a, if we if we can go back to the to the case. This is the situation which uh, you can be in, in big trouble because, uh, because you have uh, uh, this kind of complication completely outside. Uh, you need to put uh, a covered stent uh, across the diagonal. So you have to put a covered stent uh, uh, LED diagonal in this situation. And, uh, and if uh, you have to check the contralateral injection because you can have also uh, increase of perforation even if you put a cover stent in the diagonal branch. In this case, you have to go to surgery for right. sure. So if you weren't you know, a, a very experienced operator, then you would probably stent LED diagonal of, so that no flow goes towards the perforation. Yeah. And then you send the patient for a memory to the LED, to the surgeon, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for sure, you, you, you need to close completely the LED but you need to also be careful about uh, the uh, continuous flow of in the in the perforation side from the from the right. So you have to be you have to check in the other in, in the right coronary artery, okay. and if you have not uh, continuous uh, filling from the right, you 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 seal the perforation. Then you can think. Uh, to mammary artery in the not in urgent situation. But if you have, uh, uh, if you put a covered stent and you have a steel, steel perforation, this is a big trouble. That's, that's a really important point uh, to check the collaterals because you could still be bleeding from the collaterals. Yeah, because- have, Did you have a comment? Sorry, Roberto. No, no, okay. Please, we ask him. Oh, no, no, ah, I, okay. I an excellent case. So uh, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is the problem of when you have a perforation of collateral in CTO, you yeah. always have to take account of the uh, the other uh, the the other artery, the artery filling, uh, retrograde uh, the collateral. 
because uh, uh, you can put coil uh, during uh, before the, the rupture, but you have to check always the other side. This yeah, is right. a very important point. And Roberto, maybe the first case, just a comment for the fellas, if you can. Um, because there it looked like the perforation was contained in the AV groove, in the muscle, okay? Uh, it wasn't going to the pericardial space. Yet you still put, put a covered stent. And I completely agree. But maybe you can tell, maybe share with uh, the fellows the importance of those, you know, perforations that go into the muscle of how they can actually become complicated with time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely with you because you can have, uh, in this case, uh, you can have a big uh, uh, increasing hematoma in the muscle and can, can make a compression. Uh, can, you can compress also the right ventricle and you can have a cardiogenic shock for that. So you have to be really careful in this, that situation. Yeah, because yeah. If this happens, you are really helpless. So I, I lost one patient, you know, uh, due to this complication. This is really something which cannot be... Uh, overestimated a uh, myocardial hematoma is really dangerous situation yeah. yeah also in the septa when you have a septal rupture and you have to be really careful because if the septal br uh, break in a cavity this is good because uh, you have no hematoma but if you if you are not if you have a uh, the septal rupture only in the septum you can increase the hematoma and you, as Joachim said can be really really dangerous yeah. Maybe just one quick question from the participants and then we'll move on to the next case. Miguel? Yeah, I just had one uh, basic question, Dr. Garbo. Can you elaborate a little bit on what was done with that microcatheter and how it was done? Yeah, in this situation, uh, the concept of uh, uh, jail microcatheter technique is that uh, you can work with the microcatheter distal to the balloon inflated. Okay. So that's why... and. We will see in the, in the next uh, situation of perforation. This is a situation which you can, uh, the first point is that you need to close the hole. So the balloon is necessary in this case to, to avoid the increase of uh, perforation. After that, the operator was able to put a microcatheter in parallel, distal to the balloon. And with the balloon inflated, it was able to work uh, with the CTOY in order to, to gain a recanalization of the artery. Got it. Okay. okay. This is the concept. Okay. Right. The second, the second okay. situation, equipment loss or entrapment is a very uh, un, uh, rare situation. It's not so unusual. And uh, uh, I showed this case last time with the burn entrapment so it can go fast. This was a CTO with uh, uh, LAD CTO calcified lesion uh, trap entrapment of the burr in this situation uh, I show you again the, the movie for people who were not able to see uh, you need to cut with the scissor the advance of the system you remove the sleeve and you put a guide extension in that case was a was a, a guidezilla in order to advance the guide extension in front of the burr. You can see here. The burr here is like a distal anchoring. You can advance the guide extension because you have a burr fixed in the artery. And, and then you can see here, the guide extension come in front of the burr and then you need to pull everything. and remove. This was the final result after stenting. Another situation, it was a, a, a case of a circumflex uh, occlusion, uh, easy crossing with the, with the filter and the carvel. The carvel was used anti-grade, but the carvel doesn't cross the lesion. Uh, the operator uh, rotates the carvel in order to, to advance the microcatheter. And uh, he had an, a, fail, a, a rupture of the tip of the caravel. You can see here in the yellow arrow, this is the tip of the caravel that is uh, rupt, completely rupt. The 
detached from the microcatheter and then he put a balloon in order to push the caravan tip further, but uh, he failed. He performed uh, an, a knuckle and bailout in order to, to go alongside the tip of the caravan, but he failed again and uh, and then he stopped the procedure. You can see here the car, the tip of the caravel in the in the artery, and he decided to plan another uh, another attempt by retrograde. So this was a rupture of the tip of caravel. Another situation: right occlusion can, not, seems not so complex. Crossing with the with the fighter wire, with the caravel again. This is the floor of storage of crossing with the fighter, like was in parallel with another wire. The first wire failed, and then the fighter was good in crossing. You can see here. But that. The same situation, the caravel did not cross the calcified lesion, it was stuck at the level of the mid of the right. And then the operator tried to move, to remove, to, to go back and forth with the microcatheter, but he, he had the same situation, the, the rupture of the tip of the caravel. Dilatation. With the, with the balloon try in order to, to push the caravel further. And then he was able to remove, he was lucky to remove the, the caravel tip. With the balloon inflated, he, he pulled everything out. And the tip was uh, uh, was luckily removed by the the artery, and then he performed rotablator easily and good final result. So in this situation, we have two cases of caravel tip detachment. So I don't use caravel antegrade in uh, because i don't think i don't think it's a good microcatheter for anti-grade ct or pci and because you cannot rotate uh, because is a my is a, a braid microcatheter is in, in is not coil and in calcified cto the tip is too fragile you risk uh, to to have a detachment of the tip you want to have some question or i can go on with the other yeah maybe the one question i have uh, have you seen this with other micro catheters no uh, we will see in retrograde we can have some uh, uh not me but i can show you a, a problem with the corsair but it was a completely different story but uh, uh uh, the tip uh, rupture also uh, with the very expert colleague like Cambis Mazayesh have seen in a, in a live case by him, he have the same situation of a rupture of the, the tip of the caravel in calcified CTO. So I discourage the, the use of caravel in anti-grade CTO PCI. Mm -hmm. It's very good for, normally I use caravel for uh, retrograde, uh, collat epicardial collateral. Where it is a fantastic microcatheter uh, for this uh, uh, flexibility profile uh, in order to cross very tiny epicardial uh, trolateral, but not in calcified CTO. Normally, in integrated calcified CTO, I use a uh, turnpike spiral. It's a fantastic microcatheter, and uh, you can you can rotate and you can push in calcified lesion. Uh, Corsair is obviously is good. Uh, Mamba is another very good microcatheter for uh, integrated calcified CTO. Okay, great. Thank you. Another situation is a uh, uh, donor. We can go to retrograde now. Donor vessel dissection. This is a very, very high risk complication. We know that in retrograde CTO PCI, uh, donor vessel is really, really important. Uh, 
We have to be really careful not to have complication. This is a case of an hostile RCA instant CTO. It was performed three years, four years ago. I re-enter with ultimate bros. You can see here what very difficult to push and advance the fine cross retrograde because the instant occlusion. And uh, as you can see, I, 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 you can see the in the red arrow, I had to do uh, a deep intubation with the uh, retrograde guiding catheter. Was it the ABO was deep in the left main in order to to push the fine cross that was I was able to 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 advance in the anti guiding catheter, but this was the situation. What happened? So we have the edge tree in place because I externalized the wire and uh, I dilate anti grade the right, but I have this huge extensive dissection involving diagonal branch and the patient suddenly uh, had a cardiogenic shock. So in this situation, you have to be uh, really fast, but you don't have to, to, to have, uh, uh, you have to know uh, in your mind that you have a wire that is uh, for sure in the true lumen up to the septum because the other tree is in the true lumen. So you need, but you have a microcatheter covering the septal because you are in rate of rate. So in this situation, you need to be really fast. You have to remove the microcatheter, maintain the RG3. That's why I did. So I removed the, the, the fine cross and over the RG3, I do a dilatation in order to restore the flow in the, in the, in the left system. And I put a stent in the proximal LED and the left main. And then I proceed to, to treat the, the RCA CTO with the stenting. So once the left system is okay, I with the same wire, I, I performed the PCI on the CTO. This was the, the final result. And this was the final result on the left system. So in this situation was a, really a nightmare Acute, acute dissection in the left uh, donor artery. But uh, if you uh, if you know what you are doing, you have you 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 don't have to to push a second wire in the in the LED because you risk to jail the RG3 and to go in the false lumen. So you have to to be careful and uh, uh, use the RG3 as a, as a safety wire. Uh, another situation and. Uh, for sure, in this situation, after that, uh, I not always take a second wire in the distal LED in order, like uh, uh, the name is a really safety wire, in order to, to have a wire in the distal LED uh, to, to, to put to, in order to, uh, to evaluate, to, to have a dilatation and stenting in the second wire if you have a dissection of this. Mm. There, there are a couple of questions from uh, about that case, uh, Roberto. You just one sec, Miguel. Yeah, uh, one question from uh, Dr. Menegos, one of our attendings here. He was asking, "What did you do for hemodynamic support, if any, for this patient when he developed shock? If you had both points occupied?" Yeah, in this situation, uh, we we have uh, we were fast to uh, in this. Yeah, you need to open very fast the left main. So the first point in this situation, the 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 patient, uh, the pressure dropped down to eighty, and uh, before I have a cardiac arrest, uh, we remove the fine cross because we have the the RG3, so we we can remove uh, uh, easily the fine cross without any any other uh, uh, problem, and we put uh, suddenly a balloon in order to restore the floor the the, the flow in the left system and yeah. uh, in this situation if you if you have a, a, a persistent cardiogenic shock in this situation uh, you uh, and uh, you need to uh, it depends on uh, uh, also on the access because if you have two femoral access uh, that uh, that are for uh, with your uh, two guiding catheter 
uh, you can put, uh, for instance, an EIBP in the in one of the two femoral, uh, making a, a, a little bit uh, up in the femoral. You can you can puncture. You, you can put an, uh, another EIBP. If you are radial, you can use the femoral axis also for an impella. And if you need uh, more support in this situation, do you usually go radial femoral or bifemoral? Yeah, this is an interesting question. Normally, uh, in the in the past, I start with the bifemoral approach because everybody was start with the bifemoral. Now I have uh, uh, more than 90 per, ninety percent of cases have at least one radial approach right. where access, and in fifty uh, percent have biradial access, okay. and in in forty percent one radial and one femoral. Okay. And Important uh, that. When you have when you have two fem two radial access, uh, uh, always uh, in the right radial artery, I put uh, the guiding catheter for the left main, and uh, in the left uh, radial artery, the guiding catheter from the right coronary artery. So in order to to have a good support, when you are uh, uh, with the right radial, you can do retrograde. You can put a guiding catheter for the left main. You can have a very good support. You can do whatever you want. Okay. And, um, you know, a couple of people here were concerned about your last uh, cine there, where, which showed a, a staining uh, next to a septal branch. They're asking if there was a perforation also. Yeah, yeah. This was the... This was, uh, Perforation, but was not uh, the the septal I use for the retrograde. Was the first septal I use for the first attempt. Okay. So, in the, uh, for a question of time, I, I, I didn't show you that. Uh, I try at the beginning the the second uh, septal. I fail and yeah. I switch to the first septal. You can see here the se first septal is perfect, and in this case, the we check for sure the, the septal, this kind of perforation, you can manage uh, conservatively. Okay. The septal. Um, there was a question about, um, about perforation before that kind of relates to this, uh, which is when do you give protamine? Do you, if you, do you occlude with a balloon and see if you've contained the bleeding and at that point remove your equipment, give protamine, how long do you wait? Or do you always go for a covered stent and not give protamine? Yeah, this is for the perforation of main vessel. Uh, you, you need, you start with the, with the balloon, but uh, if the balloon doesn't close perfectly, I go with a covered stent in this, uh, normally. And uh, you know that uh, if you put a drug eluting stent, you can put uh, inside the drug eluting stent a covered stent. Uh, and uh, also the restenosis rate is not so high. This is a very important point because you have the first layer is uh, with the drug is uh, against the wall. And then you can put inside a covered stent. When, uh, when you have a, a distal perforation, we will see later. Normally I put coil. I want to be sure to close the perforation because I have uh, in the past some case of uh, uh, perforation that seems to be okay in the cat lab. Yeah. And after three, four, five hours where you are in ICU, you can have cardiac tamponade. Right. So you need to be really sure that the perforation is closed before leave the patient from the cat lab. And, yeah. uh, and protamine, if you want to use protamine, you have to use when everything is out. Right. One last question here, and it's regarding to um, donor vessel complications. So like in this case, you had a left main dissection. Would you necessarily defer the CTO uh, after you deal with a donor vessel complication or it just depends on the situation? You know, people yeah. are asking if you had a left main dissection, don't you think you should have deferred? The, uh, yeah, in this situation, as you can see, I crossed the CTO retrograde I have the RG3 in place. So once you, you solve the problem very fast with the, with the stenting of left main, the patient is stable with, without drug and the, the, we have timetry flow in the, in, the, in the left system. The EKG is normal. We were able to, uh, to close the procedure stenting and uh, opening also the CTO. But when you have a, a 
a bad complication in the donor vessel and uh, you need you need to 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 go on with the CTO maybe a long CTO it depends you can stop you can go defer for a for a next attempt for sure it, yeah. it depends on situation mm -hmm. yeah uh, one last question here also is do you then try related to your last comment do you try to put a des uh, uh, underneath a, a coverage stent or is this something that just circumstantially happens and you take advantage of it excuse me this thing that you mentioned about how you could put a drug eluding stent against a vessel wall and then inside of it yeah a drug, a, a, a coverage stent do you try to do that in, in the setting of a complication or is that just something that if you have it is a good thing? But uh, the problem is that, uh, Miguel, uh, usually uh, you can have a rupture uh, after you put a stent and then you post dilate the stent. So okay. you, you have already in place a drug eluting stent, you post dilate the stent and you have a rupture. So you have already in place the drug eluting stent. Right. Okay. okay. This situation. In the, in, an, in the other situation, which you have a rupture, uh, like uh, without putting a stand before, but just with the balloon, yeah, in this situation, uh, it depends on the situation. You can uh, normally, uh, if the, the perforation is huge, you, you go with the covered stand uh, uh, immediately and uh, right. not drag a routine stand and then a covered stand right. later. Yeah. Got it. Right. Let's move on then. Okay, we have, we have the ischemia of the collateral channel. We have this interesting case of, uh, uh, this happen, can happen when you go with the very tortuose epicardial corkscrew, you can see like this. And the problem is that is the only, the only collateral that give flow to the vessel that is occluded. Like you can see in this right, we have a right occlusion, and this is the only the only ramus, the only branch that give flow to the right. So you can have accordion effect, like in this case, you can see on the left is a is a very bad image, and this led to cardiac arrest. You can see because uh, uh, with accordion effect on this branch, you can have you can completely stop the flow to the right. And you can have this kind of bad complication that was uh, solved by removing everything. So uh, the, the operator uh, was able to and uh, need to remove all the gear from the from the collateral. Fortunately, he has no rupture in the collateral because the problem is that if you have a complication like this, and you have a rupture perforation in the collateral, you need to close the collateral and you have no flow to the right. But in this case, it was lucky and removing the, the, the gear from the epicardial, he restored the floor on the right and he solved the problem. Differently, you have collateral channel perforation and this is another story. We know that uh, different collateral leads to different risk and epicardial collateral this is uh, in the uh, light green uh, perforation is much more risky than septal collateral but we will, we will see that uh, septal collateral are not uh, all, all benign perforation we know that so we have to uh, know that epicardial as a risky more risky but uh, also septal are not uh, completely without risk. This is a, a case uh, uh, I performed many years ago and was uh, epicardial tracking with the Corsair uh, from left to right in order to cross the, the, this uh, tiny uh, channel. And I have a sort of, uh, uh, the Corsair at a certain point uh, uh, accumulate so many energy with the over rotation that it jumps completely out. Uh, it was impossible to control for me the this kind of microcatheter. And this what happened on the right after I make a check. You can see huge perforation 
of the epicardial channel. And we have a field XT in the distal LED. So at this point, what we have to do? Immediately, we have to take a balloon in order to stop the flow in the distal LED in order to stop the perforation. So this was the first step. The second step was to put a second wire in the distal LED and to put the microcatheter distal to the balloon. This is the block. It was the, my first case in which I used this technique. Uh, so distal uh, proximal block with the balloon and distal delivery of coil with microcatheter. In, the, in that case, uh, four coils were necessary, you can see, but I avoid, I avoid to, to have a pericardial drainage because it was able to completely close the perforation, uh, putting uh, uh, this coil and the balloon was necessary to, to stop the, the, the flow, the bleeding. This is the case of septal rupture. You can see is an ostellar CSTO. I went retrograde with the caravel. This is a caravel and the wire from the, the first tiny septal. You can see on the right, I tried to cross. But I was not able to cross with the wire, the septal. Then I make a mistake, you can see here. What happened? I advance the caravel and I make a tip injection. And even if uh, I have not a good flow in the uh, back flow of the blood in the microcatheter. So I want to see what, uh, which was the, the position of my wire in the distal septal. But with this injection, Distal tip injection in a wedge position uh, led to a rupture of the septal. And coil release was necessary. In this situation, you can see I have the balloon in the proximal uh, septal. And in distal to the balloon, I have the caravel. And they put uh, three coil in this uh, uh, septal. The problem is that the rupture was, uh, and this is the, on the right, the paper we published on the CCI on this technique of uh, balloon microcatheter technique. We, the, in, the, the important feature of this technique is that you can do also with six French. In normal PCI with the six French, you can have a, a small microcatheter like Caravel or Fine Cross and the balloon that you can use uh, for trapping and for uh, and for jailing uh, the microcatheter and closing the hole. So also in the six French during normal PCI, you can do this kind of technique. In this case was a seven French. So balloon proximal, caravel distal and coil. But in this case, uh, cardiac uh, pericardial drainage was necessary because uh, the patient developed uh, uh, cardiac tamponade because of the huge septal rupture that uh, I had. So after pericardial synthesis and uh, coil embolization of the septal, the patient was uh, was well. The problem is that uh, uh, she uh, persisted to have angina and. Uh, uh, even if I was not happy to do that after uh, 12 months, uh, uh, I, I need to treat again in order to, to reopen this right. In this case, uh, I went, you can see in a distal septal, you can see on the, on the right screen, we have the, the, the coil in the first septal of the previous attempt. And the, the distal septal was really easy in that case to cross. So uh, in the first case, I make also the mistake to choose the wrong septal because the distal one was so easy to cross with the caravel. So uh, I crossed the septal with the, with the, the, with the Sion and caravel, and then it was easy to perform the retrograde opening. And the patient is uh, now she's uh, really well after 
more than two years. So uh, that's a that's a great result, Roberto. Um, I wanted to just maybe highlight that technique for the colleagues because I think it's a really useful technique to, you know, inflate with a balloon, jailing your cyber, jailing your microcatheter to work distally. Um, I've used it also just so the colleagues know for periphery. You know, when I've had a with a Tava or Impella or balloon pump, a big uh, perforation, and I don't have a wire. So I will then go, you know, from two access sites. The so one will just be a balloon, okay, to inflate the balloon. And then I'll have a, a, mic, a catheter, a peripheral catheter yeah. um, next to it, jailed, so I can wire the distal branch, but there's no bleeding. So you can use it in the periphery as well when you have a, per a big perforation. It's very useful. Yeah. Um, so the and one thing... Normally, uh, if you are talking about no, normal PCI that the fellow yeah. can do, you, know, if you, you have a soft polymeric wire in the diagonal and you have a distal perforation in the diagonal. In the, in the past, we, we explained uh, to fellow, uh, we tried to put a balloon in order to see the per we can seal the perforation, but we know that uh, this wire, distal wire perforation are really, really dangerous because uh, many times the perforation you are not able to stop only with the proximal balloon. So my suggestion is, in the, I always do in this situation when you have a perforation like this, it's very important not to move the wire because the wire have to be in, a, in, a, in the same uh, position. And you can put a, a second wire in parallel with the balloon proximal in order to, to block the bleeding. And with the, in the first wire, you put a microcatheter with a trapping technique you go distal to the balloon, you can check with the contrast and you will see the perforation. Then you can put coil, the first coil, then you can go a little bit back, you can inject again. If the first coil is okay, you, you're finished. If you're, you, you still have a perforation, you can put a second coil and uh, even with the balloon proximal that uh, closed the hole. Yeah. Now the other advantage is I've seen people when they try to put coils, the microcatheter comes back and jumps backwards. And so the coil doesn't end up where you want it to, right? And it may embolize into a, a more larger vessel. Yes. So the other reason I like this technique is because you really hold the microcatheter there. So when you deliver your coils, you get them to where you want to. The coil yeah, because, because the microcatheter, microcatheter can't is, come is back. Block, it's blocked. Yeah, it's blocked. Yeah, it cannot go back, cannot yeah. go jump back. And then it's important uh, uh, in this situation to use uh, detachable coil that I always use this and not pushable coil because uh, we, we learn from, from uh, ne neuroradiologists, uh, they treat uh, uh, cerebral aneurysm, that uh, detachable coil, are, uh, the coil perfect for, uh, for coronary perforation because uh, you have perfect control of this coil. Normally the size of the coil is, uh, I use is uh, uh, 1.5 millimeter or two millimeter of diameter and 40 millimeter of length. And uh, with this detachable coil, uh, we have many coil that are compatible with all microcatheter we have because they are 0.10 inch coil. We can go inside uh, and when you are sure that uh, the coil is good, you can detach with the detacher and easily. Right. So are you using the EV, which just quickly two last questions uh, on this case, which coils are you using the detachable coils? Cause there's more than one. Um, yeah, we, we, you have uh, EV3 mm -hmm. coil, like Concerto coil, and uh, is very good. Uh, one another coil, fantastic, is a uh, striker, striker coil, target striker is fantastic, or microvention from Terumo also is good. And uh, these are, uh, I think, the, tri the three best uh, uh, detachable coil system. Okay. And then the, the second question, when you have a perforation of collaterals um, and you have to coil them, my concern is always about bleeding from the other side of the collateral. Uh, so yeah. how do you make sure that, I mean, what do you do in those cases? Yeah, in this, those cases, uh, 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 for a question of time, I have not, not shown you this, this case, but uh, when you have... Uh, uh, like uh, normally in epicardial collateral from uh, circumflex to the right uh, to the posterolateral branch. In this situation, 
you have uh, a, uh, if you have a perforation of the epicardial, you need when uh, when you open the right, uh, you need to to go in the posterolateral branch and to put another coil from antegrade. I have a, a case in which uh, I make a mistake. I open, uh, I have a, a perforation of the collateral and the circ. I put a coil and then I open the right antegrade. And uh, I didn't see very much uh, uh, a big perforation from the from the right, uh, but if you look, if we were able to look very careful, this was the, there was there was still uh, uh, bleeding, and um, the patient went to ICU. It was a patient in uh, atrial fibrillation, so with anticoagulant, and then he developed a, a large hematoma uh, in the in the AV groove closing uh, completely the, the right atrium and was uh, was was good. we were lucky to manage uh, con conservatively but this is a ca case in which you can have a, a disaster so suggest is for sure when you have a, a epicardial uh, perforation in the cto always go in the other side to see with the with the the other the other way. Uh, normal the problem is that if you are not able to open the right antegrade, you have no problem. Because okay. because because you 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 close from one side the collateral. Okay. But the problem start after the reopening in the other side of the artery. So be very careful at the end of the procedure. Okay. Thanks Roberto. Another, another point, uh, uh, equipment entrapment uh, on the retrograde size. This is interesting. Is a really a crazy case. It was not for sure a CTO. It was a woman with the uh, bioprosthesis, perimount magna S, severe aortic uh, de degeneration of the valve, and the ostial RCA sub subocclusion, uh, acute coronary syndrome. No, it was not able to, to select the right in any case. I need to go retrograde. And I cross retrograde easily. I take a snare to, to capture the retrograde wire and to externalize the edge tree. You can see this is the snaring. Until this point, everything was perfect. The problem is that I was not, not able to dilate with any balloon antegrade with one, one, one zero, 125, and was no way, even with the, with the edge tree, even with great support, no way to open this ostium. I go retrograde with an over the wire, you can see it was a regime 125 balloon, no way to, to, to dilate the ostium. And then I tried to, uh, oh, I said, okay, we finish, we stop, we retrieve the, the RG3 and we, uh, we send the patient to surgery because he has to, to, to do uh, re-intervention on the, on the bioprosthesis that is degeneration, but no possibility to retrieve the wire that was entrapped in the ostium of the right. The patient get uh, hemodynamic uh, destabilization during the retrieval because of the stretch of the LED, you can see here. And I need to put EABP. And uh, to send was the, the, the only case I sent to the, to the surgeon in retrograde in this, in this year. And what, what the surgeon, he showed me that it was impossible to remove the RG3 until he, have, he has removed the, the bioprosthesis because the, the wire was completely stuck, jail between the, the aortic wall, so the sinus of the right and the scaffold of the bioprosthesis. Another case of uh, uh, entrapment of Carave that I told you before was uh, uh, LED CTO, ipsilateral from the septal, failure of the fine cross, Taking of the Corsair ping pong technique with Artemis Bros in the second guiding catheter, but the wire was trapped and strong push in order to advance the Corsair. You can see here. 
at the end, the Corsair was stuck with the wire and damaged, so it was impossible to move back and forth. And uh, uh, at the end, uh, the only solution was remove everything with strong force. With this result, it was a rupture of the Corsair outside of the, of the patient. And this kind of rupture of the septal. The situation was, uh, was stable in the cat lab. After one hour, the patient developed a cardiac tamponade. It was drained in the cat lab. And at the end, uh, after two hours, was no, uh, no, no necessity, was not, not necessary to put coil because the, the blood was in the septal was uh, stopped. So uh, we can go to the uh, final consideration of this presentation. Uh, CTOPCI are the most complex subset amongst the coronary lesion. It's not surprising to see higher percentage of intra and interprocedural complication. The operator experience is essential in order to quickly recognize and handle all sorts of complications. So when you plan CTO and we have the good expertise to, to do that, uh, we need to think that we, it, it means also planning for uh, treating complication. Thank you very much. Excellent, Roberto, thank you so much. Uh, that was phenomenal, really interesting cases. Uh, I'll see if Miguel, if there are any questions from the, um, from the audience. So I wanted to tell you, just so you know, the, the case you showed with the entrapped wire and the bioprosthetic valve. Okay? Yeah. The valve there is not a magna ease. It's actually a Soren mitral flow. And the, ah, is that, uh, yeah, it's a mitral flow, yeah, yeah. yeah. And right. the mitral flow, because the leaflets on the outside, that may be why you got stuck there, you know, uh, is because there's not much space. When they put the Soren okay. mitral flow in, there's almost okay. no space between the aorta and, and the ring, okay? It doesn't have a thick ring like the, the perimount that pushes you away from the aorta. So that may be the design of that valve is also probably why you got stuck there. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You are right. It was a my, it was a mitral flow. Yeah, it was a it was a had a mistake in the in the. In the I think that shape of valve is also why uh, it, it didn't help. So the scaffold yeah. of, of the mitral flow can 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 make a sort of a, a obstacle to the to the scene to the ostium on the right. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Garbo, I have a, a very specific <laughs> question. Um, I've thought about these cases and I've seen a couple. How would you, how do you manage a perforation in the osteo left circumflex? Because obviously, delivery of a um, covered stent there might result in occlusion, partial occlusion of the left main or complete occlusion of the LAD. Um, what is your strategy normally for this specific type of perforation? Yeah, this uh, like like the, the case I show you was uh, was uh, like a sort of paraostial was not comp yeah in the yeah. in the ostium. Yeah, we have to say that uh, uh, true ostial perforation is is quite difficult to have this kind of uh, uh, perforation exactly at the level of the of the of the ostium. But if you have this kind of perforation, you have, in a you need to think that. Uh, the only way to solve if you have a big perforation is uh, uh, that you have to solve in the cat lab. Because uh, uh, I discussed with the surgeon in that case that uh, went in the cat lab, he told me, uh, you need to, to close with, the, with your, uh, your, your device. Because if I go in the, in the operating room, I need to go in, uh, um, I have to put the, the, the patient on pump and uh, uh, I need to close everything. So the risk is prohibitive mm -hmm. in this situation. So you need to think that you, you need to put a covered stent for sure in the ostium. Probably I will try in this situation uh, to do a sort of, uh, of a T stenting oh, in, yeah. with, the, with the covered stent in the ostium and the left main LED stenting in order to keep open the left man I think that's, um, it's in the or or in another, another situation put a sort of uh, uh, 
uh, a wood stenting, you think you can see like uh, a wood stenting, uh, a little bit protruding in the in the left main with a cover stent, I put the other stent in the left main. This is a, 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 a situation, a really bailout situation that yeah. but, uh, uh, can give you the possibility to go later to do a bypass in a safer situation. Because uh, um, one situation in, is doing urgent bypass grafting, and another situation is close the hole with the surgery in uh, acute phase, in which in, they need to close completely the artery, the left main. Got it. Great. Um, one question here is, uh, when you have a perforation and you have large uh, uh, pericardial effusion, and you're draining large amounts of blood, what is your experience with uh, autotransfusion? Yeah, normally in this situation, I use the, the autotransfusion. I put, uh, uh, I, I drain from the pericardium and uh, I, I put the blood in the vein. In the, I take a, a femoral vein and I put the blood, the, the, the blood in the vein because uh, uh, you think that uh, the case I show you in the, the circumflex uh, rupture uh, for a matter of time, I didn't explain you what happened in, uh, at the end uh, where after the drainage, uh, the situation uh, in another case, I, have, uh, I need to, uh, to drain the pericardium and uh, to drain uh, a lot of blood, but uh, the, the blood persistent to have uh, to have uh, to 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 increase in the the right ventricle and uh, to to do a tamponade. That's why because I have uh, one case of uh, uh, right ventricle perforation during the the attempt to have uh, pericardial drainage, or one case that uh, I showed many years ago in uh, Euro PCR. I have a, a crazy complication because uh, um, during the the puncture of the of the pericardium. I puncture the. Uh, I take from external, from the exterior of the the LED. I puncture the distal LED. So I have. Uh, I remove blood from the pericardium, but I have uh, an increased flow coming in the pericardium from the LED perforation. Yeah. So in this situation, if you are not able to to do auto transfusion, uh, you lose many many liter of. Uh, of blood and uh, you cannot solve the situation. So the autotransfusion in this case is essential in order to maintain the, the hemodynamic stability of the patient. Got it. Or, or I have another case like two years ago, though I, I don't know if Azim, you, you, oh. you have some, uh, you have a case of this. Uh, I had a, a rupture of a vein with the, during a retrograde approach, I, I have a, a perforation of the epicardial, and the wire was a SWOT03, uh, led to uh, damage the vein. So once I close the epicardial with, with the coil, I have a persistence of uh, uh, pericardial uh, effusion because of vein rupture. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the only solution was, uh, was to do uh, autotransfusion from, uh, from the pericardium to the, to the femoral vein, the patient lose, uh, I think, uh, five or six liters of blood, and then I have to send to surgery to okay. in order to put uh, a patch uh, and the and the glow to close the the rupture of the vein. It was a, a really unusual perforation. I don't know if you are, you have uh, this kind the the experience, uh, Joachim or Azim, of this case of vein rupture. You know, so I've seen when uh, one of my colleagues, uh, who's a big expert with um, uh, with reducer, okay, uh, he went to go proctor and they ruptured uh, one of the cardiac veins uh, with a balloon, doing putting a reducer, and yeah. it's it's a big disaster because the only way, unfortunately, you can fix it is surgery. Um, once you you know you tear the vein. So even that patient ended up in surgery. The, and the surgeon, all he does is just suture over the vein, right? Because yeah. he can't really repair it. Uh, the so problem, yeah. the in fact, in that case, the crazy situation was that uh, probably the vein, because of heparin, yeah. uh, in, the rupture increased uh, minute after minute. So it became bigger and bigger. And yeah. uh, at the beginning, uh, the patient with the, with the, the peak tail in the pericardium yeah. uh, have... Uh, if you, you stop to, to drain blood, 
he had a, a new tamponade after uh, 20 minutes. Uh, after one hour, after every five minutes, you have a tamponade mm. because probably the vein is a sort of a big rupture uh, and uh, that increase because of the wall of the vein is really fragile. I want to see if Joachim had one. You know, Joachim disappeared for 15 minutes and in the 15 minutes, he quickly did a Tavi and he came back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. really? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, unfortunately, I have to leave, but not before I really uh, thank uh, all of you, in particular Roberto, uh, for you know, I learned a lot from him, and uh, I think it's always a very honest to uh, show uh, show the the complications you maybe have created by your own, uh, and uh, I think it was a really very fruitful discussion. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Joachim. Um, thank you, Joachim. We'll keep you. There were just two last questions from the fellows, and we'll take these last two questions, and then we'll say goodbye. Miguel. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, one, uh, one of the questions is, uh, if you could comment about uh, management of a perforation into a cardiac chamber, do you, um, do you manage conservatively? Do you coil? Yeah, this is a very important question. Uh, when you go in a cardiac chamber, you are you are free. You have you need to manage conservatively, and uh, sometimes, in fact, when you have a septal hematoma, one strategy is try to push a wire in order to create the connection between the septal and the chamber. So okay. when you are when when you have a sort of fistula from a, from a septal branch and the chamber, you are lucky and you you can. Uh, manage very without do nothing uh, conservatively in a safest right. way. Okay. Yeah. And the last one is uh, how do you manage um, osteal dissections or um, um, when you're uh, uh, when you are attempting uh, an approach in the left main or the osteal RCA if you have an osteal dissection extending into the aorta? Yeah, in the in the right or on the left either or in the left yeah uh, when you have this kind of uh, complication it's very important uh, be careful with the, the injection of contrast because uh, uh, one of the problems is that you are in the, in the dissection and you you inject uh, uh, with powerful injection the contrast extend the dissection proximally so you need to do uh, to, 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 to have to stand with drug eluting stent and then to put a covered stent in the, the level of the ostium. And normally this kind of uh, dissection uh, you, you, you can manage uh, without go to the surgeon and uh, you can do a CT scan uh, after three or four hours and the 24 hours and normally the, the dissection is sealed. So, so you would put a covered stent in the ostium of the... If, if you put a royalty stent, if the dissection persists, if persists the dissection, you can check with IVUS at the level of the ostium. If the, cover, if the drug gluten stent is not enough, you can try with the second drug gluten stent, like a sandwich, or at, at the end, a covered stent inside the drug gluten stent. But avoid to inject powerful in the at the level of the dissection got it excellent thank you Roberto thank you so much uh, that was really amazing um, and and like you know Joachim said it's you know it's 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 often challenging not everybody wants to share their complications but you really shared it in a very open educational way where I think all of us let learn from it I learned some new things I'm sure Joachim did but I'm sure definitely the fellows uh, we have no more uh, no cath conf other cath conference this week, but next week we have two cath conferences for those of you who want to join. Uh, one on Tuesday with Alex Abizade, who's a good friend, will be you know who's very involved in all the novel devices. He'll be talking about novel Tava devices. Joachim, you may enjoy the one; it should be very good. And then on the Thursday we have a talk on OCT, but really a basic talk for fellows uh, and 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 attendings on how to recognize uh, pathology on OCT. So it's going to be a very practical talk with lots of quizzes uh, on, you know, how to tell different lesions on OCT. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I want to I want Thanks to thank you, uh, Azim, for uh, for your invitation. You are a great, a great idea, great success, and uh, thank you to everybody. And uh, goodbye to Joachim. It was a great pleasure to see you, and uh, I hope to see you all of you very soon. So us too. <laughs> thank you, Doctor Garvey. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.